Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a day of eating vlog for keto food, yay! I get a lot of questions about what I eat in a given day, so I hope this will answer some of those questions. We're gonna make waffles, we're gonna make butter chicken, we're gonna break down the macros for the entire day, and we're even gonna show you the recipes. So this is gonna be a great video. Anyway, if you have questions, comments, leave them below, and don't forget to tap that subscribe button. All right, stick with us, we'll see you in just a moment. Good morning, my little cupcakes, my little keto cupcakes. Um, I am drinking my second cup of coffee for the day. I am a coffee drinker. No matter what diet you are on, which I don't like to look at this as just a diet, but anyway, coffee is always a constant. And so I love coffee. I love that no matter what I'm doing, I can always have coffee. And so I guess it just depends on the application of the coffee. So with a ketogenic diet, you put a lot more fat in it. Um, so what I do is I start off my day, I always have my coffee, I love coffee. And I use my coffee as part of my fat fast. And a fat fast is basically where you are only eating or ingesting, I should say, fat. So no carbohydrates, no protein. And I do that for the majority of the day. If I'm on a day off, like today is, I'll probably have two meals today. And if I'm working, which I work a lot, if I'm working, I will just have the one meal a day plus maybe like a little snack or something like that after dinner later in the day or later at night. And so I will do one to two cups of coffee in the morning slash afternoon, sometimes three because I'm wild. And then, um, and then yeah, I'll have my one meal, whatever. So today is a day off. Like I said, I will show you the two meals that I'm going to have today. So stick with me. Um, I'll probably be way more caffeinated when you see me next and we'll go through all the stuff that I eat. All right. See you soon. Okay, so I've decided that for my first real meal of the day, I am going to do um, bacon and keto waffles. And I don't do this one a ton. Actually, more often than not, we do this for our dinner, especially when both of us have worked late. But anyway, this one, I just wanted to be a little bit more creative. A lot of times I just stick with bacon and eggs, but you all know how to do that. So I thought I would do something a little bit more interesting. So first I'm going to make uh, the, the waffle recipe. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna put the ingredients down below of the ingredients that you'll need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all my ingredients, I'm gonna put them in the blender and I'll meet up with you right after that. Okay, so in order to make our waffles, I just showed you the ingredients below, but I'll just walk through them again with you. So we got four tablespoons of almond flour. And if I was smart, I would've put the liquid ingredients in first because otherwise that's just gonna sit at the bottom, but next time. Uh, two tablespoons of coconut flour. This is optional. I kinda like it just because it gives it a little better, better texture. So that goes in there. Uh, we've got four ounces of cream cheese, got four eggs, whole eggs going in there. And then I use about, this is pretty terrible, but I don't always measure, but today just for the sake of this, it's about a tablespoon or a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of um, baking powder. I think sometimes I use a little bit more, but it'll still come out great no matter what. And then cinnamon and vanilla, it's up to you how much you want to use. I like mine to be a little bit on the heavier side, but it's up to you just depending on your tastes. So we just get a smidgen of that in there. Boop, there we go. And then also just to make sure that you bring out a little bit of that sweetness, I use the, uh, the stevia, which there we go. We can focus in on that. Also, I sometimes use the Lakanto uh, monk fruit flavor or the monk fruit sweetener with the uh, vanilla flavor. If you use that, I would just skip the vanilla extract altogether. So just a little bit of this to taste and we're going to go ahead and blend and I will pause it because you do not want to have to listen to this thing blend. Hold on a second. Okay, I had to switch camera angles so you guys wouldn't be like blinded by the natural sunlight that we're finally getting here in the Pacific Northwest. So anyway, I blended my ingredients. It should be, um, at first when you blend it, it should be a little bit soupy, but then after it sets for about a minute, which I recommend one, one or two minutes, it should be like a normal batter. So you're all set there. And then what I go ahead and do is use a little bit of the cooking spray to lube up my waffle iron and you can't see it so you have to use your imagination and hope that i'm telling you the truth so i'm pouring the batter into my waffle iron here and you don't want to overfill it because well maybe my husband can take a nice picture of this beautiful waffle but we'll get back to that in just one second all right doing the other side spray 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 otherwise these are hard to take out these are they're going to come out with like a good amount of crispness so that you're not missing out on like the, I mean, it really is just like a really good waffle, 
but they're not going to be as firm as just like a normal waffle that you would get unless you add um, more almond flour, which is fine, but then you're having to worry about the carb count just being a little bit higher. So um, I'm gonna let those cook and I'll be right back and you get to see how pretty they look. One sec. I'm making bacon and who doesn't love bacon? Fun fact, an easy trick, this sounds so stupid, but I actually cut my bacon in half before I put it in the pan because you can fit more bacon in the pan. Plus when you're eating it, it feels like you're getting a lot more. Just so you guys know, this is for me and my husband both. So this isn't as much bacon as I'm going to be eating. Do you like my hand gestures? Do you know what I'm talking about when I move my hands like this? Yeah. All right, so the bacon's gonna go to the plate in just a moment and I'll show you the finish of the waffles. Okay, now the big reveal. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I know guys, no big deal. And I'm very, very cool. And I just pull it out with my hands like that and go ahead and flip to the other side, see if we did just as good. Look how that looks, guys. That texture is just spot on, if I do say so myself. Okay, so the final thing that I do, or my husband does, is melts the butter. The butter is not here. So we melt a little bit of butter, about two tablespoons of butter. Remember that this recipe that I just gave you guys, thank you, my lovely assistant, um, the recipe that I just gave you guys is for four waffles, and so that's for me and Dean. Um, so you can batch these waffles too ahead of time. You can kind of like double the recipe and you can freeze them. So they're easy to like pull out of the freezer and you can put them in your toaster oven or put them in the regular oven. I don't know if they'd fit in the toaster oven, probably not. But um, anyway, they are super good. They're very easy to make. That didn't take us but a few minutes to make them. And you get the, the sweet, the savory from the bacon. And again, come on, how good do these look? So I'll break down the macros for you guys on this and then we'll move on to our dinner video later on today. Okay, I gotta say it is super weird recording everything that I eat. I am definitely not used to it, but it's actually kind of cool because it's just like when you're tracking your foods, it makes you, <clears throat> pardon me, a lot more mindful of how much you're eating, what you're actually putting in your mouth and not just doing the boredom eating. I don't do a lot of snacks throughout the day. Sometimes I will. <clears throat> it's usually a little bit of meat, cheese, something like that. But in this instance, I am actually just having a whole plate of cheese. No, just kidding. I'm gonna have just a couple of pieces of this. I'll let you know at the end um, how much I have. But I usually, this is the variety pack that you can get from um, Costco. It's like, I think it's like $9. Anyway, I'll have a few slices of this. I'm making butter chicken. Uh, for dinner tonight with cauliflower rice and I'm using the Keto Connect recipe and I've made it a bunch of times and it is so good. All right, I will see you again at dinner. The Keto Connect butter chicken recipe, I modified it just a teeny tiny bit. I mean, if you went on their website and followed their recipe exactly, it's awesome. But I just kind of made a couple changes just for our own preferences, nothing major. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna put the ingredients down below that you're gonna need. But basically it's gonna be, it's chicken, it's onions, butter, heavy whipping cream, and then um, a few arrays, array of spices. And like I said, I'll put that below, but let's get started. So first I need a bowl. I'm back. All right, so just any bowl will do. This is completely fine. And to that bowl we're gonna add is a half teaspoon of cinnamon. I know it sounds really weird, but this is Indian cooking and it's really, really awesome. Um, you need one teaspoon of the chili powder. Um, the original recipe I think called for like three quarters of a teaspoon, but I like a little bit more kick to it. So you can adjust that based on, you know, if you like it spicier or not. It's not a real spicy dish, just so you know. And then it's one and a half teaspoons of uh, turmeric. And it's funny because I think I brought turmeric a long time ago for something. I can't remember what it was and then I never actually used it. And since being on keto, when I put these, uh, the turmeric together tonight, this is the last of my turmeric. I thought that was interesting. Something I never used very much before at all. So, and then one teaspoon of ground ginger. Yes, you wanna stick with the ground and not the fresh. The fresh ginger is delicious, but it will overpower the taste of this dish. So you put all that together in your mixing bowl and then you take your one pound of chicken, give or take it a half ounce or something, and you just throw it into the bowl and mix it all together so it just gets really well coated. And let's see if I have a spatula here. My assistant is, my assistant's laying on the floor looking at me. I'm talking about my dog, not my husband. Um, so yeah, anyway, just mix all that together so you get all the chicken pieces pretty evenly coated. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time that the next step on this is going to be cooking the chicken part of the way, like you cook it to like the 85, 90% level. And one of the key indicators of like, is your chicken cooked, is it looks like really white, like it's cooked all the way through. When you put this 
um, this seasoning on it, you can't really see uh, as far as like how white the chicken is once it's cooked. So you really are gonna have to either rely on just, I don't know, intuition or a thermometer if you're not sure. Fully cooked chicken should be 165 degrees, but again, we're not cooking it all the way full. So I'd say if you hit the 155 mark, you're pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the skillet. Give me just a second and I will bring the camera over that way so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I've already added my two tablespoons of butter to the pan. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions to it. So um, the onions, you're just gonna cook them a little bit until they're kind of like translucent and then we will add the chicken in. So give me just one second. And my two cloves of garlic into this, kind of at the same time that I'm doing the um, the onion preparation. And I actually do like kind of three, again, this is one of those modifications that I kind of make. I add in an extra clove of garlic just because I really like it garlicky. But the original recipe does call for two cloves. So use your discretion. And one more. So how are you guys doing? Dean keeps like, I think Dean's more interested in the food than me, which I can't blame him. This is like a day of eating blog. So it makes complete sense, but anyway, so, oh man, that smells so good already. But garlic is just amazing. Like garlic smells like happiness. If you go home and you open the door after a long, hard day of work and it smells like garlic, like how happy are you in life? Okay, so Dean, if you wanna look in on our beautifully, oh man, those look good. Those look really good. I don't get excited about onions. Anyway, so to that, that's when you're gonna add your chicken to the pan. And remember this, in this instance, you're not going to want to cook it all the way. So like I said, 90 to 95%. Takes about three to five minutes. Again, just depending on how quickly um, or slowly your stovetop cooks. So be very careful though too. Um, I always try to even out my chicken in the pan so as to A, not crowd the pan but also so that it cooks evenly. Right, Dean? I'm a cautionary tale. Dean's nothing. <laughs> okay, so if you look at our chicken now, um, it's reduced in size. That's what you want. That's how we know this is the magic moment. And so to that, we are going to add our one cup of heavy whipping cream. And I get this stuff from Costco, which is like the 40% whipping cream. So. Your, um, your macros might change depending on what percentage of whipping cream that you get. And then also we're going to add our two tablespoons of tomato paste. And yes, paste, it has to be tomato. I guess tomato sauce would maybe work. Dean, what's your thoughts? Ketchup is the closest substitute. Oh, oh, you guys know I hate ketchup. Why do you do that, Dean? Ever done it so anyway so I'm making sure that you smooth in um, if you want to look at this one more time Dean so we can smooth in the tomato paste all the way so just make sure it's equally distributed there we go and you want it to be like a nice orangey color okay so anyway what we're gonna do after that is I'm gonna let this simmer for just a little bit so the flavors can really really get in there I'm also gonna heat up our cauliflower rice because that's what I'm going to be serving this over there's a lot of different options I know that there's some um, keto uh, non recipes which would be pretty interesting to try I never have tried it but for this one we're just gonna serve it over some cauliflower rice so we'll be back with the final Okay, so as you can see, this is the final product. Like I said, I put cauliflower rice in there and then just ladled the holy heck out of that, put it on top of it. It looks amazing. We did add a little bit of salt in, I forgot to tell you guys that. So make sure you put a little bit of salt in there just based on your taste. And also Dean had me add a little cayenne pepper to this one and it was really good. But even if he didn't have that in there, it's perfectly delicious. So we're gonna go eat this and we'll be back with you in just a little bit to show you what our last snack of the evening is. This looks amazing, yum. So for my last trick of the day, or we'll call it the last snack, I guess, um, we just made something really simple. It's just a, a chocolate mousse. And the truth is, like, I'm not even really hungry. I wasn't actually even gonna eat this, but just to kind of show you guys what options are out there, as well as like making sure, trying to get your macros in. The truth is, like, you don't have to, I mean, you're supposed to eat until, you know, you're actually satisfied and you're full. And one of the benefits of a nice high fat diet is that you don't feel the need to eat as often. But anyway, so I added this in and it was actually the perfect macro capper. Um, so total, oh wait, let me show you it first. 
So it is literally just cocoa powder, heavy whipping cream, a little bit of like stevia and Lakanto monk fruit is what we added in there just to kind of balance out because they both have different sweetnesses. And then just like a tiniest hint of cayenne pepper, completely optional, just gives it a little more balance of flavor. So mm, it's really good. I don't think I'll be able to eat the whole thing, but if I did eat the whole thing, here's my macro breakdown for the day. Yes, I wrote it down. My carbs were 27 grams total, but my net carbs were 19. I usually like to stick with total carbs altogether, just so everybody knows, but net carbs is really, you're still fine. So net 19 net carbs. A lot of my net carbs or my carbs came from heavy whipping cream, which I don't usually use this much of. It's just a coincidence today because two of the recipes I used called for heavy whipping cream. Uh, my protein was at 65 grams and my fat was 122 grams for a total of 1,459 calories. This is actually pretty low. I usually eat just a little bit closer to like 16, 1700 calories, just depending on the day. But percentage wise, these are almost perfect keto macros, which I didn't even plan this way. Protein would have actually been 20%, 5% carbs and 75% fat. Pretty darn perfect. You, they don't have to be like that every day. I don't want anybody to think that there's like only one specific number that fits everybody. I'm a little bit more carb sensitive, so that's why I try to focus on uh, total carbs rather than net carbs. But today, just for our purposes, it's okay. Anyway, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these, if you'd like to see less of these, if you'd like me not to cook at all, that's fine too. But I really hope this helps some people and that you enjoyed the content. And I will see you in our next video. Thanks, guys.